glory to us is much like when Chip and Jojo say, are you ready to see your fixer upper? And then they roll back that big canvas of what the house used to look like, revealing all of the new landscaping and renovations and remodeling. And the happy couple lets out a big gasp and usually the woman puts her hand over her mouth and she begins to cry and the man slaps his forehead and they say something like this, it's beautiful, it's amazing. I can't believe that it's the same house. But glory in our text is described differently. Glory is not found in the dazzling or brilliant appearance of person, but rather that this person veiled his brilliance and majesty with flesh and is crucified. His glory is revealed to us in his death. Welcome to Life Words Day by Day. Previously in Exodus, God's glory is displayed as powerful and great and awesome. He manifested himself on the mountain like a devouring fire. In the temple, it was the intensity of his glory that hovered over the Ark of the Covenant. In Exodus chapter 33, Moses made the request, God, show me your glory. Well, Moses had already seen the glory of the Lord in Egypt at the burning bush and the ten plagues and the presence of God in the cloud by day and the fire by night. Moses ascended Mount Sinai and received the law from God in a devouring fire. And yet, Moses says, please show me your glory. Moses is asking for more, a clearer picture, a greater understanding. He wants to see God face to face. And in an incredible scene, God hides Moses in the cleft of a rock and tells him that he will make all of his goodness pass by, but that Moses cannot see his face or that he would die. And in chapter 34 of Exodus, when Moses comes down from the mountain, his face is shining because he had been talking with God. And the glow was so exceptional that the people were afraid to come near Moses. So this glory in the book of Exodus was manifested in some type of brilliant, shining brightness. Yet John says in his gospel, in chapter 1, verse 14, we have seen his glory as of the only Son of God. So what exactly did John and others see? The glory of Jesus was not put on display in radiant, glowing light, except from at the transfiguration. Instead, the glory John speaks of is the fullness of grace and truth. Jesus was seen by thousands of people, and thousands of people did not see his glory. They didn't speak of his brightness. In fact, Isaiah says that there was nothing particularly lovely or overwhelming about Jesus' appearance. He was extraordinarily normal. Instead, the glory John speaks of is described as the fullness of grace and truth. How then can John say we've seen his glory? How do you see grace and truth? And this is where we realize that in this introduction, John introduces to us many different themes that he will develop, develop later on. You have the theme of light and darkness. You have the theme of witnesses, the theme of the belief of the world. And we have this theme of glory in verse 14. We have beheld his glory. This theme is later picked up in chapter 12, verse 20, and it's here that we begin to understand the manner in which Jesus' glory is displayed, and it's in his death. That's a strange yet humbling type of glory, isn't it? That someone so loving and honest and powerful and miraculous would come and die. It's odd until you understand the reason. And the reason is that he was our sin bearer so that we may be set free. As you pray today, please remember Kendra Barnett, one of our missionaries in Romania. And also remember the Rundi Life Word broadcast heard throughout the Rundi.